Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of my video tutorial series. Um, in this part I'm going to show you how I color hair in Photoshop. And um, hair has to be positively my most favorite thing to color on a person, excluding eyes. I really like to color eyes as well. But hair is a real fun thing to do. And it kind of looks spiffy in the end as well. Alright. Your first step would be just like the skin tutorial last time. Hard brush, 100% opacity, 100% flow. New layer above the skin, obviously. Choose yourself a hair color. In my case, since I'm coloring Morgan, I'll be taking a, a crimsonish color. And then all we do is just flat color the area. Then, of course, just like last time, clean up any unwanted bits. Alright. Now I'm going, we're going to lock our transparency again. And now we're going to take a softer brush. Again at 45% opacity and flow. And I'm going to take a darker red now slightly big brush, but bigger brush, and I'm going to shade the bottom half of her hair darker. Um, I'm not picking up my tablet pen at the moment, so we get an even opacity around the bottom half. Then I'm going to pick up my tablet pen and start shading the bottom quarter, and so on, until you have a nice gradient. If the color looks a slight bit uneven, you could always alt-click with your eyedropper tool, make it a little more even. Okay, in the end we have this gradiented hair. Now I'm going to du duplicate the layer and we're keeping the uh, transparency locked and then I'm going to just color the entire thing, the entire locked layer now. If the transparency is not locked it'll probably mess things up so that's important. The transparency has to be locked. Then I'm going to color the top layer of my um, two duplicated hair layers now. So we have two layers. I'm working on the top one and I've covered it, covered it in white now. Um, now I'm going to take a soft brush and we'll, we're going to lower the opacity and flow again. And I'm going to take the red I had earlier. Um, preferably the average red color, not too dark, not too light, otherwise the shadows will come out slightly too dark or too light. Then make sure you have pressure sensitivity enabled on the Photoshop if you're using a tablet. Mouse users might struggle a bit with this step. But then all I'm doing here is following the hair strands. It's as simple as that. It's not really complicated. Okay, that's it for the shadows. If you want, you can go with, um, lower your opacity a little bit more and just kind of shade it along some areas like this as well. And then, now, when you're done with the shadows, you're going to set the. You have to set the um, blending style of this layer to multiply, and then uh, the white would have disappeared, and your shadows would be overlaying your uh, your hair layer, and so it looks like you have shadows now. I think I've made it slightly a bit dark, so I'm just going to adjust the colors on this layer, the, the bottom layer, a little bit more. 
for a little bit so that um, it's not as dark. Okay, now we make a new layer above the, the, the shadows layer. Set the blending mode to color dodge. Lower the opacity to around 15%. Still using a soft brush and we're going to use a rather small size. And then stroke the uh, where highlights would be. I think maybe 15% is a little too low, so I'm upping it to 25%. This step takes a bit of patience. Otherwise it will look rushed and um, you'd be unsatisfied with the result. Alright, we have the basic highlights down, and then this is optional, but I like to make a horizontal uh, highlight around the crown of the head as well. And there we go, that was really really simple, wasn't it? <laughs> and um, that's really all there is to it. Um, I'll see you next time in my next video tutorial, where I'll probably show you how I shade clothes. <laughs> um, thanks for watching, bye!